And it's going to be now like a lot of what we would consider very accessible kind of entertainment or travel or all of these things which were becoming super accessible to all are going to go back to being less so and less, mm. you know, and money's usually the driver, right? So we're on, uh, I guess, day, what is it? must be 952 of... Uh, of the lockdown <laughs> no, or no, or was it sorry week 952 it certainly feels like week, that yeah or, or week six but yeah definitely feeling like it's um well it, i suppose the longer this goes on the more normal it becomes and i, I actually I, you know, I haven't been on a tube uh train since mid-march that's now crazy. that that in itself isn't that long a period of time, but given my in my adult life and really even probably since I was a teenager, you know, growing up in London, that is probably the longest period in my life, apart from like when I've briefly been abroad, uh, like lived abroad for a couple of months or something. Um, the longest I've ever not been on London public transport. Yeah, you know? <laughs> but 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 I'm in London. <laughs> yeah. Um, and driving as well. I mean, I, you know, when was the last time? I, I do occasionally drive um, just to go to the supermarket and stuff. I just drive so... once a week just so the car actually works. Um, and yeah. Uh, But yeah, that's that kind of feels odd. And I mean, I haven't Imagine... had much coffee um, because I, I just can't quite be bothered to go for the full coffee faff. So I'm just having tea. Oh, wow. I normally would buy coffee, you know, in a coffee shop. Um, so I just haven't had a coffee. Uh, right. Yeah, because like that's for the... maybe over a month or more. Wow, that's the one thing. See, everyone was, you hear people saying, "Oh, yeah, I'm binge eating and stuff like that." And I, I haven't. I don't think I've succumbed to the binge eating. Um, but I've definitely. I mean, I mean I'm definitely snacking more because really? the fridge, you know, ten feet away. Yeah, um, I, I think actually because I work generally work half the week from home anyway. I'm I'm quite used to not having to you know to to behaving normally like that i don't really have a kind of desire mm. to always go to the fridge but i have i have noticed my coffee intake has gone up and i don't i think that's partly boredom and partly right i'm just mm. gonna give myself i just need a you know five minutes away from the desk i'm just gonna make myself a coffee and then you know, it's... i'm very efficient on household chores like I, I i i'm i'm the first one at the dishwasher loading and unloading and kind of just because it's something to do to break up being at the computer yeah um uh and so yeah I mean, it's just I guess it's just, I mean, and my step count, you know, it's just so low. I, it's, I think it's because I feel really, you know, I go to the park, but um, so many, <laughs> and there was a heavy the season, another reason yeah. not to go out. Um, and so but the park seems so busy that I just kind of think, oh, I'll go at a much more weird time of day when, you know, people have taken their kids home and all that sort of thing. And then it gets to said weird time of day and I just can't, go, oh, I can't be asked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, so well, yeah, I've, that counts accordingly low. I've definitely been, I, I think mine's gone up actually part, partly because I'm kind of getting into a cadence of going for a run every day, although I haven't, I didn't go this morning actually. Mm. Um, and uh, sort of go, because the kids are here, we try and go for a walk with the kids once a day as well. Right. So, <clears throat> so actually, I've actually found that, so before this all happened, I was probably working, well, it varied between, one, two, and three days a week from home. Um, I think in the in the run up to this, actually, I ended up coming into the office most days. Just I don't know, it was just more things happening. Um, we had Seth coming in and things like that. But um, generally, sort of maybe do half the week at home, half week. And I was kind of doing running on the days that I wasn't coming to work. And now because I'm not mm. coming into work at all, I just yeah, I'm feeling I'm doing a lot more exercise. I actually feel like physically and and you know, almost from a sanity point of view, much in a much better place than I did prior to COVID. I mean, that's aside from the whole kind of, you know, terror about <laughs> what's actually happening in the world and, and what's happening to the, specifically to the economy as well as obviously people, people's health and things. But um, if I can put that to one side, actually in my, in myself, I actually feel a lot better. I think I'm eating health better. I'm doing a lot more uh, exercise. I mean, taking more time a sort of family. Straw- whole of social media i'd say you're in the minority there yeah well yeah mate i mean I, I suppose i'm in a lucky position in that i live sort of in the country which you know has come into its own all of a sudden 
Yeah. Um, I, and also I'm here with my family. So, you know, lots of people. And you go outside and you're, and there's not loads of people around you anyway. No, like I mean, it's quiet anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You can go for a run and not see a single soul sort of thing, which is. That's not, there's not what I experience when I go anywhere near a park. It's, right. Is it still, is it really rammed in London? It's, it's busy in the parks because where else are you going to go? Yeah. Right. Um, so and the it, streets are empty. I mean, I don't think people are, and I don't see people sort of sitting down kind of sunbathing and, and all that daily mail crap about, oh, they're ignoring it. I think they're just, you know, people, we have less space in the city. Most people are in small flats. Most of them don't. I have a bit of outside space, so I'm lucky. I think that's one of the main reasons I don't go out as much. And because I have outside space, I, I think I should allow people that don't to kind of take advantage of that rather mm. than I don't need it as much, but I just need some miles in my legs, really. Uh, probably best during the week. I kind of, if I go out, maybe but then you kind of screws up when you have dinner and stuff but if i go out at sort of seven and walk for an hour you know i'm not back till after eight and so it kind of it's a little bit tricky um but during the day it's not like a normal quiet day because everyone's at home they're taking their children out it's, it feels like the weekend most days um yeah but yeah i mean and, and and there are parts of the park where you know the path narrows between trees and stuff there's just no way you can be two meters away it's just not possible right um um you can usually go and go and find some green space but again what you're going to do is sort of just spin around like a spinning top oh, um, man. so it's so i just choose to stay in right i mean i just think socially responsible stay inside uh, avoid going out as much as i can um and, and you know, i'm doing my exercise inside i'm doing my classes and things like that but just my my, my leg mileage and, and and in fitness i think a, a lot of the fitness that you do is in what you actually do in your life rather than necessarily your workout. Your workout's like a bonus. Yeah. But, you know, if you do a workout and you do 15,000 steps, then you're doing really well. If you just do a workout and then do 2,000 steps, there's a yeah. big, there's a big looks- chunk of calories that you're not. Um, and then if you've got a fridge over there, <laughs> which is going, oh, what shall I do now? Well, <laughs> yeah. I'll just pick on something. Oh, I'll just have a little bit of that. Uh, so I, I think that's what I'm experiencing a bit of that. Um, I'm trying to be okay with it. Um, Mm. But, but you know, I, it's, I so I suppose the, obviously every, the question that everyone's sort of asking is what what does this do? Is this gonna how is this gonna change people once this is over? Like, are we all obviously everyone's going oh that's the new normal and 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 clearly we're not immediately going to go back to anything like it was before at least until there's a vaccine found. But we're gonna be it, freakish it, introverts. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know how to talk to people in real life. It's like oh my god, it's a person. Yeah. We just have to do. Hello. Can we, can I talk to you via Zoom? It's easier. Yeah. 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 Can we change uh, our backgrounds and everything's okay? Oh. Yeah, I'm um, in San Francisco. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but just, it'd be, I suppose, I suppose there's a few things, like the, the kind of thing, like businesses themselves, maybe they, they'll have got over their paranoia, perhaps, of, of if people are working from home, they're not going to work. I don't know. Um, that yeah, might be, I think that's been kind of, Although I, I, I seriously doubt people's productivity is, is that good, right? I mean, if you're homeschooling kids and working together with no support, childcare, there's no way your productivity is as good as it was. So in as much as people are probably getting over that, I mean, it's, the productivity will have dropped, but then a lot of people's projects will have been put on pause. You know, there isn't as much going on. Mm. So I think it will be, I think probably for the the ones that were naysayers of the work from home thing, they kind of need to see some degree of new normal to be convinced about it. I would have thought Um, because right now probably things aren't getting done anywhere near. I mean, you've got people on furlough and stuff, right? So, you know, the company productivity will be down, but then there's, it's not, there's not as much kind of happening when things are on pause. So I I doubt, I doubt that the case has been fully made. Yeah. But I wonder if there'll be also on the other flip side, if there'll be staff that are saying, you know what, I, I was a bit of a kind of um, bit, a bit cynical about working from home. You know, what was I going to do? Get my laptop on my, you know, I had no, where was my workspace? And, and actually mm-hmm. thought, well, maybe there is a way I can do it a little bit. Uh, or, you know, I can certainly do some of my days from home and it doesn't, it doesn't seem quite so bad. It would be really interesting to see whether there is, a, you know whether this is a step towards something that's inevitable like is what is homeworking more inevitable 
um, like in the long term? Is, is this yes, the way that we're going to go? And definitely. then secondly, have we, have we made a kind of, you know, a seismic leap towards that new re- reality or, or, or is this just a blip on the way to that? I think inevitably, you know, if it was just two weeks um, like this, then, then you would say it's a blip, right? But, you know, we're getting towards the second month now um mm. you know and then it's not and then it's, it's sounding like it's going to ease back in and if you can work from home i think the encouragement will be to work from home just to ease pressure on uh commuter trains you know, like yeah, your, public, transport, yeah. like public transport is going to mm. be a lot of pressure there so you know if you if you think that those things it, it, you know how easy is it for government to say if you can work from home please do work from home they might carry that on till october yeah or longer, right? it, so, yeah. or, or longer, exactly. Mm. Now, I imagine some people will say, look, you know, I just got to get out of the house now and again and maybe come in for like an, a meeting or just to something, right? I, I, I don't know where that goes, where, where, where it will end up, but it will naturally begin to ease and maybe it'll be, okay, I'll just come in, but I won't, you know, I won't go at rush hour. I'll go at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock and I'll come back at three or something. Yeah. Um, just, I think just for a bit of sanity, like, you know, just, I, you know, I, I only... I'm only here with one person. <laughs> yeah, I've only yeah. I've only seen and really spoken to one person for a long time now. Um, yeah. We haven't killed. There's not been any murder yet. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like it's, that's what. That's not a lot of people. <laughs> it, yeah, it's. I mean, I I think I'm in a as I say I'm in a, in a bit of a bubble because I've you know I've got two kids who are under ten, so they're not like teenagers. Like that mm. would be awful. I think if you had teenagers in your house, I, I feel so sorry. I mean, I kind of think if I was 15 or 16 now, mm. uh, this would be absolutely unbearable. Um, but in our little bubble where we're all ha- quite happy kind of hanging out with each other, it's actually quite nice. Um, but I think people who live on their own. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 you know, I, lo- I actually loved living on my own. I've always enjoyed it. But when I lived on my own, I had quite a strong, like there was always, it wouldn't be I live on my own and don't go out and see people, mm. you know, it, it was, it, you would always have a strong social calendar when you were living on your own. Otherwise you would go mad. But now where's that? <laughs> yeah. Thinking. And Zoom doesn't count. I just don't believe Zoom counts in the same way. Yeah, um, we've, we, we've tried it. We're, like we've had a few evenings with friends and stuff and, and it's kind of funny, but it's, it's hard work for a start. You everyone's get more talking, tired. Yeah, everyone's talking over each other. <laughs> it just, yeah. kind of just happened there. Um, and... Yeah, you, after an hour and a half, you're like, okay, I'm, I, I really need to stop this now because mm. it, it's just doing my head in sort of thing. But it was actually, yeah, it was kind of, we've done it a few times. It's quite funny, but you wouldn't want it. It's not the same as going to a pub or going to a restaurant or... But if you think of like a normal social evening with friends and family, you know, that could comfortably start, you know, let's say even, you know, especially with young kids, you tend to start a bit earlier. Um, so, you, so you see the kids as well. Like you could be... I just think I could go around to my friend's kind of place. If it was summer, we would have a barbecue. I might go around like four o'clock. I mean, you know, when I go home to like 11 or 12. Yeah. Right? That's quite a long time in the presence of others. But it doesn't, it feels great. It feels kind of effortless to a degree. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, I haven't, I couldn't do. <laughs> you couldn't do that on a Zoom. For, if we do, horrible. Eight, hour, yeah. eight hours. Oh my God. Like, I, I, I'd be, I just, I've done a three hour Zoom. That's pretty long. Yeah. I mean, you well, know. we did two and a half hours yesterday. That was quite long as well. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But I think also we had like, you know, specific things we were talking about as well. Yeah. So it tends to kind of pass the time. If it's just, just chit chat. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's kind really of like, yeah, yeah. it's, um, that's a bloody long time. And I, I just, I, I would go mad. I would just be like, right. So, but that, you know, if you said, oh, I'm going to have a dinner party, it's going to last two hours. People would be like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weird. <laughs> Eat and get out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dinner will be ready on arrival. <laughs> yeah. And like, Chip chop. Go ahead. We, hey, we, we need that yet. Yeah. Cause we've got another dinner party after this. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, I, I, I suppose the other thing for our, I mean, for screen cloud, we, you know, we, we were always kind of doing this, sort of semi-remote uh, mm. thing and some people did more than others um, and some offices had more of a kind of remote culture than others um, like in Bangkok it wasn't really that prevalent people pretty much yeah. came to the office although it was a, it was it was a, it's a kind of different vibe in Bangkok I guess to say London um, mm. but 
you know, and then in LA, the guys came in, the sales guys, they kind of, that, that was a, that was just normal people. Kind of, and it kind of felt right somehow with salespeople, mm-hmm. it feels more normal to, to be sat amongst each other. Um, but yeah, I wonder how it's going to actually change uh, what we do. I mean, it's kind of, it's always sort of been led by individuals in conjunction with their, you know, with their team and with their managers. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I kind of feel it might not change anything, but um, or maybe it will. I don't know. It's it's uh, it's interesting to sort of think about how that might change well, it, well, our own pre- way pre- of working. It also presents us. So I was kind of thinking. All right. So let's say that this is normal, and you know, then you've got all of this thing about commercial real estate. People are going to just you know shrink the amount of space they have. But then conversely, okay, so you shrink it down, but inevitably that means that your space is hot desking, right? Mm-hmm. But hot desking right now is a bit frowned upon. You know, sharing yeah. equipment, sharing sort of chairs and things like that is like non-ideal so that kind of doesn't really work because Mm. you're saying all right we're all going to come back in but we don't need as much space because most people are at home but we can't hot desk so either we have like on demand deep cleaning services or i mean if everyone's got to have a desk then well that doesn't viably work either right yeah 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 you have to yeah that's true it's tricky isn't it um so like you know what everyone's going to have their own chair that they can go and pick up out of storage i mean what's the point i'm in for two hours just going off down to the cellar to get in my chair <laughs> give it a proper wipe down like I mean, yeah just, so i mean there's obviously all speculation uh, on all of this kind of stuff but no i think the reality is you know this is here to stay in some way shape or form for another whether we like it or not and therefore you know there's um like define a blip how long is something kind of unusual until it becomes actually this is now the blip is now so big it's actually now something that we're kind of accommodating i reckon it's i reckon a month Mm. you know i think a a week or two weeks is like yeah whatever like it doesn't like christmas and new year's always feels like kind of weird time right it's weird but good but you know that Mm. kind of time off between christmas and new year like what is is it holidays it is it's kind of chill time and but you lose a bit of your routine. People kind of, you know, people always come back and go, oh, it was great, but I'm glad to be back, right? They normally do that. But it's yeah. a blip. And then give them one week back in January, and they're like back in the zone again. If that period lasted all of December, I think people would look at December very differently and go, okay, December's this sort of bizarre, chill out, fatten me up, <laughs> yeah. sit on the sofa and watch TV month that we've somehow agreed on, not that we ever would really, but yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you would probably think of it differently and not allow it to happen in that way. It's kind of it's, a lazy Sunday doesn't represent what you normally do. Mm. I kind of think, obviously we couldn't do this, but if, if everyone had known that this was coming and we were, everyone said, right, look, we're going to have to lock down for two months. Mm. Like if, if you'd had that foresight as individuals and as organizations, where, how much different, how much we would have done differently. Um, in and that I, case, I, probably very little. Yeah, I mean, I suppose part of the thing as well is not knowing when, it, when it's going to actually end. But, um, mm. but yeah, in our case, the, the, because we were already set up that anyone who wanted to work from home could work from home, it was actually mm. practically not that difficult. Um, yeah, it was easy. It, yeah, we didn't have to. I mean, I, I know uh, other people where it's, you know, it's just been horrendous and they've had, to, you know, they've had to work really, really hard to suddenly get things um, available from home and it's probably not 100% and all that kind of stuff. Um, but also like if on an individual level, like, as I say, this kind of back to this thing's like, okay, I've got two months. I'm going to be at home. It means that I'm, the weekends are going to be less busy. So I've, because we were about to move to America before this happened, all of our weekends in the two months leading up to this were packed, jam packed with, you know, people that we had to see things that we had to do before we were, before we left. Mm. And I just remember, uh, remember feeling really tired and going, Oh my God never have we haven't got a weekend off now for two months sort of thing and then suddenly mm. we get into this thing and every weekend we've literally got nothing to do so we've, yeah. we've been kind of doing you know big gardening projects and things like that but again i wonder if people had had that kind of foresight uh, or warning i'm just thinking because obviously there might be future lockdowns but whether you kind of like okay what am i going to how am i going to spend this time really productively but both work-wise but also in my own sort of personal development and well kind of i think a lot of people you know so for example the people who live downstairs from me so i'm kind of in a flat on the first floor and there's a downstairs flat as well so they they just got out of dodge right they um there's i think there's three or four people who live down there 
I've mm. only, I think I've only met two of them, but they, re- they haven't been there that long. They're just, they rent. Yeah. Um, and they're kind of in their twenties and obviously they're, they're not, a, they're not four people as a family. They're like flat sharing. Right. Yeah. So I think that when they got the kind of sense of it, and I think there's a lot of younger people who have done that. Um, they just went back to where to live with their families. Like I know people who've moved back to kind of, you know, to where their mum and dad's place is, if there's enough room and or back out to the countryside just to get this kind of space that you get. Because having those four people in that space is absolutely fine when you're not there most of the time. But like cohabiting in that space with four people is cramped. Mm. Um, that would be, that would probably yeah. send them nuts. Tough. Yeah. Um, and they don't have outside space and like, I think that they did the sensible thing and they, you know, you could see they just pulled the shutters down and she actually emailed me and said, cause some post happened and I'm just taking some stuff for them. Um, but otherwise, like, I think, I think, and I know other people who've done that. And I think next time, if there is a, a sense of lockdown coming, I would, <laughs> if I was in that situation, I'd probably do the same thing because it doesn't make much difference you know, doing it in Yorkshire or Sussex or whatever is probably mm. much more pleasant than doing it here. Now, maybe I imagine people might be thinking, oh God, being with my parents for two months might, might drive them crazy. I don't know. So they, but I think that people might need some sort of plan B. Where would I go and hold yeah. up that is a bit more accommodating than a busy city where I've got no room? Yeah. Um, would, would, like in retrospect, would you have kind of hot footed it over to France where your parents are? Um, yeah, possibly possibly um but then france is even more locked down than here so you know mm. um yeah i mean i kind of because we've got this just having that bit of space like i've never loved my little garden more than i have loved it <laughs> yeah. now and i'm and i've not really been much of a gardening type but oh god just having it there is just thank god thank god for that um mm. so it hasn't been so bad and you know because yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Possibly. Because mm. I think, I mean, I think there's a, there's a chance from what we were saying, everyone's saying is that there will be another lockdown at some point in the future. Um, if it's in the winter, I think I would definitely go for the space. <laughs> yeah. It has been great weather, right? That has been the one, say, and I, I think actually that has really helped the mood because we yeah. had crappy rain last week. It was raining most of the last week. And that felt, for me, it felt much more like we were being contained in. Um, Mm. So if it is the kind of standard British dark, wet winter, then I think that would be deeply depressing. Yeah, it would be a time. It might, ironically, Airbnb might kind of have a renaissance where everyone's going, Yeah, I was thinking about that. You know, book a place, (laughs) book a place for lockdown. But then I guess you could, you, if you're paying like, you know, a lot of money, a thousand pounds a week or a thousand pounds a day or whatever. It depends depending. what comes to some arrangement. I would have thought, yeah, but like, uh, and then you're there and it's like, dudes, we're still in lockdown. It's going to be another month. It's like, I can't afford it. Yeah. It could be financially yeah. crippling. Yeah. Um, no, Maybe, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy really. Like, yeah. Every time you kind of go into the sort of wormhole of how this plays out, it, it starts to get weird. Mm. Um, you know, about, holidays and travel and like whoa. <laughs> yeah do you do you find yourself watching tv and you see like you see people doing something like you know really innocent like going to a market or something on tv you know yeah, you, yeah. you go that's impossible how are you doing I that was, yeah i was watching yeah. a movie it was a movie it was a bit crap but it was a, it was a, it was like just kind of classic kind of policey thriller murder thing saturday night like yeah put that on um, and it was it was about ironically it was sort of about locking down New York, but they were locking down trying to find like these killers and stuff like. That. Anyway, it was it was very much focused on Brooklyn and Manhattan, mm. and you know they were going into kind of bars and clubs and hotels and and, yeah. and all of this stuff, and you're like, oh, that looks so unrealistic now. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Like, yeah, your re- how your reality changes suddenly. Um, I mean, we were looking at photographs. You know, there's this thing at the moment, like, well, there's one about albums, but there's another one about photographs. Yeah, of uh, midway photograph- through. <laughs> yeah. And you, yeah, and it's like photographs of kids on the beach. And you're like, yeah, you just couldn't do that now. You wouldn't be allowed to go to the beach. Mm. It's kind of but, bizarre, yeah. But I also think, I do, real th- I do really think that as much as we kind of all think, oh, it's, everything's changed, like, it, it, it won't be much before it a lot mm. of those, those things, assuming that they are legally okay to do it, they will come back. 
Yeah. Right? It, 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 will, it will come back home. And then I think what the interesting thing is, is what then happens to us all. Like, how, is it, I guess, was the question that we started with. How will our behavior really change? I mean, we, will it change at all? I think it, I can't think that it won't. I can't think that people won't. Uh, now, that people are so much more used to using video conferencing, working mm. from home. I mean, and that's the big thing, isn't it? It's like working from, for, for us as a startup, um, you know, we've got a team, we've already got a, a team that's kind of spread out around the world. We're kind of used to this remote working um, or certainly f- distributed working. Um, whether remote becomes more of a thing for us, I'm not sure. I think, um, yeah, I think, I think that's all inevitable. I mean, what really interests me is the things that were on the fringe of acceptable anyway, um, becoming totally unacceptable. And the things I'm thinking of there primarily are when I'm in a football stadium and I am literally pressed against people right like it is the seats are small i don't really even fit in and i'm not that big you know i'm a big but not enormous Mm. um and for me to sit in a football seat with if there's other large guys around me we are going to be pressed against each other like that even like even just in front we are so tightly packed into those places think of like a budget airline you know if another guy gets on my size we're, we're touching the whole time we're touching like yeah. it's not it's literally even like that a kind of you can do that for 12 hours you're gonna do that for three hours or whatever like no chance that's mm, yeah. um that is going to be unacceptable the tube right the tube like in london at rush hour oh yeah you're you've, packed packed you're, together someone might have their, their their mouth in your ear kind of thing it's literally, almost like yeah yeah and if you cough because your arms are pinned to your side, there's no way you can scramble, get a tissue or put your hand up. It's almost impossible. You're so packed in, mm. right? And is that, that is, that, that is freaking unpleasant anyway. Like no yeah. one loves being packed into stuff. But now, is this the, ca- the straw that breaks the camel's back? And it's a pretty big straw, right? Mm. Um, that just says no. But that means all that, you know, there's only one thing that you and, and think of like restaurants and even some of those bars, like those little New York bars, you know, they are really, you're yeah, tight, the, the speaking disease type thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, just think, you know, you're up against, even just a, a busy pub in, in London. You yeah, know, and you're uh, uh, carrying pints, excuse me, through, sorry. But even yeah. at the bar, right? You can have three yeah. people deep, you can have arm to arm sort of jostling to kind of get through and all that mm. sort of thing. Like, this just can't happen anymore. Like, it, well, whilst this is still a thing hanging over our heads, you cannot do that. That is massively unnecessary physical touching to mm. other human beings. It was never fun anyway. So, like, none of us are going to be um, kind of romantic about. Oh God, I just remember when I was stuck <laughs> next to so many people in the tube and it was boiling yeah. and someone, and someone farted and it, yeah, it went on my hair face and it was amazing. Yeah. Um, so, but obviously, there's going to be cost involved. Now, I remember like my, my, you know, my grandparents, you know, thinking that sort of airline travel was quite glamorous. The airline industry was glamorous back then. You know, it was kind of, mm. it was really, it was expensive. It was, it was, um, I got a feeling that certain things are going to feel because, you know, if I have to be one seat separated from one in a football stadium, well, I mean, that's interesting because the football stadiums, right, they can't, they can't easily get bigger. I heard a, a theory that they would be, piping in the sound of people cheering along at home because if you if you have half a football stadium it's echoey right weird it's like it's not like if hardly anyone goes to a football match there's no atmosphere it's crap right yeah the, the atmosphere is there when everyone is tightly bundled in and you've got this kind of cauldron thing going on mm. like but if everyone has to be one seat aside you know so- you lose so much of this yeah, so things like that you, that what they could say is, oh, got to be a nightmare, but you could say you can go on the tube, but we're going to be really restrict who goes on it, how many people yeah. go on it, and you're going to have to pay more because... Exactly. It would probably be that if you buy a premium ticket, you can go at eight o'clock, but we limit it at that many people, and after that, you're not allowed on anymore. Yeah. Well, so, maybe that's the thing. Yeah, you buy tickets in advance, and then mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a finite amount. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so gym, gym classes, which is obviously something close to my heart. Like when I teach, if you have to social distance in there, that means that what would have been 25, 30 people is now down to 10 or 15 mm. in the same space. It's going to feel completely different, but from a cost point of view, they're going to have to put the prices jack right up. Yeah. Right. Because like, it's not like the, the well, but unless everything comes down and all, but the real estate costs will take a while to shake out. Right. They're in there. They've got their, their buildings for a while. So, 
suddenly things which were on downward pressure for pricing be, and, and they were just, and therefore we were kind of putting up with this sort of crampness and stuff so that we could still experience it. I think that's going to go away. And there's going to be now like a lot of what we would consider very accessible kind of entertainment or travel or all of these things which were becoming super accessible to all are going to go back to being less so. And, less mm. you know, and money's usually the driver, right? Yeah. Or money or necessity. And, but, but I guess what it will mean is that will, for, for companies like us living in, you know, working in London, expecting people to come to the office we we probably won't be able to expect everybody to be in the office every day or mm. um uh, specific enough. yeah because it what they say like if you want me to do that you know for, like for example for me to to buy an annual season ticket from where i live i think it's about not because i don't do it but i think it's about four and a half five thousand pounds a year so if that if they say well now you're gonna have to pay more because everyone needs a seat between them um so that's mm. gonna be seven and a half thousand pounds a year then it's like, okay, well, um, you know, maybe if I go in less often and work from home and invest in, you know, make my home office space more, you know, I, I'll invest a little bit more in that. And that well, kind well, of thing. I mean, also, I mean, I think a bit of an elephant in the room there is like, uh, you know, if you're expecting people to, to effectively, you know, to work from home, to create their own home office, like at the moment, most companies don't really, they might contribute, oh, here's some money for a chair and stuff like that. But I mean, what about your internet connection? I mean, mm. this is all. What about the? What about your the, heating? What about the rent of your? You know, what about actually yeah. putting over some of your house? To, I mean, yeah, yeah because then always... you'd be hiring someone and going, look, you can't live in a in a studio flat because if you've got to work from lying on your bed every day, you're going to be crippled by the end of this year, mm. uh, and also you'll go insane, right? Because you need a little bit of space, but then suddenly. You're sort of you're, now. That's is that a, that's a weird thing where a company's almost imposing you have to have a certain quality of well, it could living be that, space. That you, the companies get sued if they don't. You know, mm. you've got duty of care, um, and and actually, people are already sort of saying that there were companies are saying they're worried about going back. What if they force people to go back to work too early? They get ill and then they sue the company. You know, that sort of thing. Mm. It's like oh. I mean, I suppose uh, the other thing though is like I guess we're talking about the new normal after this but what about let's say let's assume in a year's time or 18 months time they've found a vaccine covid 19 is dead i mean for the time being until the next one comes along but this one particularly is dead and in theory we could go back to normal do you i i, I kind of still think that people are going to be scarred by this i think they're going yeah, to yeah. they they would be they, or, like, or i that, can't believe after in the in the immediate post-war years people were feeling like okay back to it like you know like you know if yeah. you think of i think of my grandparents generation the second world war was the defining moment the defining years of their lives right i mean yeah. extraordinary times um and you know well into their old age it wasn't that they just always talked about the war of course but you know it shaped so much it shaped where they lived it shaped how family was done it shaped you know that and economically what happened next it shaped their opportunities which then shaped their careers or lack of in my granddad's case because he got you know severely injured and you know it was it was you know it, it was just the thing i mean this maybe isn't quite the thing to that degree mm. but it will leave an imprint like that's for sure um hopefully positive in many ways yeah i just wonder that you, all these things that you're saying that we put up with whereas where after this is all done and we're and we're through it whether we're going to case people will say you know what i don't i'm not going to put up with that anymore i don't need to i don't need to squash yeah. onto a fucking horrible um uh, tube every morning when i can at just as easily work from home yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. should why should i sort of thing and why and why should i work for we something to bin anyway we wanted to bin it anyway we just hadn't had the really 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 good reason to do it yet yeah but then having said that you know will it just be that the 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 people that the companies that can really afford to have to pay for people to come into the office are the ones that kind of somehow win out and and all the other small businesses that's a luxury you know or um, like i don't know I don't it's a know, bit but... like it's a bit like having car parking spaces you remember like when we yeah, had yeah. one parking space before we haven't got any now but we had an office yeah. before we had one parking space and it's like well, who gets to use that parking space? And can I, you know, it's that kind of like, if you're, if you're a city company, yeah, we're going to have everyone in. And if it costs us more to get them there, then so be it, because we can afford it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I think there will be, I mean, I, I'm very curious about what that kind of 
the office becomes. I think it becomes a place where you sort of go in for things like workshops and and do things like that. But that, that is communal. So I mean, the importance of cleaning is going to go even is going to go sky high um, in all of this, so that people feel you know, as you say, duty of care, right? Mm. Um, I just I don't know where that leaves co working spaces, <laughs> and I don't know oh, where wow, that leaves yeah. hot desking. Um, I'm even not entirely sure where it leaves things like hotels. I mean, yes, they come in and clean, but it's not, <laughs> it's not mm. a deep, deep clean, is it? Like every hotel room. Well, if it was, it would cost a fortune. Yeah. You no, know, like it, there is a there is a lot where I'm not sure where it leaves. I mean, even checking into the right. How however airports that you check in through touchscreen. Yeah, like that's how you do it. Most they got rid of so many of the right. How's that yeah. feeling right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you have to wear gloves. You have to wear gloves. No, and, and you have to do your fingerprint things, don't you? I mean, right. Well, I mean, it, yeah. There we go. There's that innovation, <laughs> sort of somewhat scuppered. Like yeah. that, literally thousands and thousands of people have just touched with their hands, and you've got to properly press it down. Yeah. So contactless, and and there's a lot of innovation that then needs to be. You know, that's where kind of recognition, facial recognition, and things like that is going to become even more important probably having more things around our phone that kind of help identify us and all that sort of thing. But, um, you know, it's just, yeah. I mean, you going to a pub and sitting at a table that someone's just left. Mm. Is that I just, I, it's right the thing now? is, it's like, like it, will, it will be terrible until they, but if they, let's say we've found a vaccine and we're like three or four months post, you know, there's not really any cases anymore. And it's kind of like, you know, it's become virtually eliminated. Whether people will be going, stuff starts to relax. Yeah, but whether people will still be, will you still? As I say, it's that scarring thing. I guess what will happen is people. So you're using scarring. I'm thinking more muscle memory. So okay. you, I, I don't think you, I don't think I'm emotionally scarred by it right now because nothing truly tragic quite happened yet. I mean, mm. I think I've had it, but I've recovered from it. Um, thankfully, none of my very close friends and family have been too affected by this, so I don't feel scarred. Like I don't like scarring but, for me is something where something really bad's happened. And it's left you with trauma. Yeah. No, but I'm just thinking that example of the thing <coughs> you, go, you go, like COVID has been really uh, eliminated. You, you're flying uh, internationally. You come into America, you have to put your fingers on something that you know that, you know, mm. a thousand people from all around the world have just have done over the last day. But no, actually I don't have to do that anymore. They've, they've now where it can, it can actually recognize my face, but again, that's from previous visits and stuff, but now yeah, actually yeah. the camera just goes, Oh, it's him. And it's right. Yeah. It's I, guess it's, I suppose if you, if you did that and then immediately afterwards that you, you, there's some anti, there's some sanitizing gel then I think there will be some things where people kind of go, mm. you know, cause even if you think about like with SARS and things like that, it didn't really, aff- I know it did affect the world, but it affected Asia more than, the rest yeah. of the world and it has left an imprint there yeah. and, and you still see you know when you're traveling internationally if you're going to see someone walking around with a face mask it's normally someone who, who's asian yeah. like, com- like it seems to be more of a thing than like it would be unusual for a european to mm. i mean it, in the past probably not necessarily and in again, the future. that's they're not doing that because they think they're spreading sars they're doing that because that's become like socially responsible yeah to sort of to do it that way um in the same way that like you know cycling with a helmet became socially responsible you know mm. it was sort of optional then people were like i think you kind of need to do this and then everyone's like it's now weird if you don't yeah um although people still do do it you know don't do it but i think also th- there is an interesting thing about kind of our our rights as uh, uh, you know like will it be that you go to a, a, a an airport or a building or whatever and people say before you come in i'm going to have to check your i'm going to have to do a quick test of your temperature or something mm. yeah like and then that what happens a bit of an imposition that's weird like I, I was kind of thinking about that like if you so let's imagine i'm flying to america with my family and my six-year-old has a temperature what yeah then i guess you're not going <laughs> do we turn around and get back on a plane can we even get on a plane because she's got a temperature you know all these things yeah. it's like I, I, what well look i mean look look 9 11 drastically changed airport security forever right mm. Yeah. After 9-11, you know, the, all of those things that happen in airport security now, they all came in because of that. Previous to that, it was relatively lax, mm, yeah, you know, for sure, but yeah. then it was not lax anymore. Uh, and that has not changed. That's like, you know, here we are so almost 20 years later. Uh, mm. And OK, some innovation has occurred around trying to speed up the process. But um, absolutely, that changed the way you board aircraft. Right. Yeah. 
um, and what you can take on an aircraft, right? You can't take the liquids and things like that. Well, right? so I, think, I think, I suppose even if they eliminate COVID-19, everyone now is going to be it's aware like, there's of There's going how, to be another one. Yeah, yeah how, how, how easy could this happen again? Well, the, um, the general feeling is like, you know, wait for the badass one. You think yeah. this was bad, wait for the badass one. Yeah, at least this one only kills a fraction of the population, but yeah. Mm. Oh, so, that- so I think that, we'll, yeah, we'll just have to accommodate this into a kind of planning in the same way that we had to accommodate terrorism into planning mm. um, and, um, you know, in city life, which for me was always normal because we had the IRA and, you know, it was like, okay, so, you know, there's fewer bins and all this sort of thing. And you, you got used to it and yeah. you worked around it and it didn't surprise you and it didn't scare you as well in the same way. You were just, because it was, it was just there all the time, ever present doesn't, you know, it's hard to maintain fear really hard because it's quite a it's quite a draining emotion yeah you know all my studies of when i did history and stuff of of war and things like that the prevailing emotion was boredom not fear right okay Um, because it's really hard to stay scared for five years yeah i I think what what's really kind of fascinating about all of this is that um we have had the technology to do this for a long time but it's taken something like this to kind of really push people into mm. to sort of push them to change the way they behave, to change the way they organize. And, and we're still getting used to it. Function. Yeah. We always need a forcing function. I, and I think we're still getting used to it. Like, I mean, mm. I, I, one of the things that we found at ScreenCAD, I think is, um, you know, we, we've, so, we've ended up doing lots of Zoom meetings and all those sorts of things. And um, I think we're probably getting better at it now. Getting, like I had a meeting this morning with Nick and it was, 10 minutes that was it it wasn't before it would have seemed rude almost to do a to do a call and and just end it after 10 minutes but now it's like right we've done that okay move on sort of thing and maybe there's a it's just those kind of social norms that we probably need to get get better at and and understand speaking of which we should probably call this one shouldn't we yeah 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 (laughs) i think we've we've gone over our allotted time but uh, yeah (laughs) so if Um, yeah no i hope there's probably absolutely zero business insight there for everyone um yeah well if you like hearing two people just chatting over the chatting chewing the cud i'm sure Um, we'll all have the same well there's there's some interesting business insight i'd love to kind of give um about how but it's probably a little bit a bit too in the moment right now for us to talk about some of the things but there are like regardless to say that you know in our working lives there is craziness right it, we're experiencing real I, mean, I just right now i don't think we should be putting a lot of it through the podcast because also i'm processing a lot of it i don't know about you about how what was our response right how we've modeled it how we've done like i'm be, obviously data is now beginning to appear about what we did were the actions that we took like look you know that I think there's some interesting stuff that I think will be amazing podcast material, but mm. we need a little bit to get past this, partly to process it for, for what it is and partly just to sort of out of respect for, for the situation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I am going, I don't but personally think I am going through one of the defining moments of my career, at least it, whether it like i mean maybe life too but because it hasn't as i said it hasn't scarred me and i'm very very thankful for this so far um there is no doubt that the the challenges that we're facing running a company during this time they're they're there's stuff which changes things there's mm-hmm. stuff which changes you and changing me about how i look at things and how i see things and priorities and and uh ooh, a lot about the investment world and what's the yeah, right way yeah. to build companies i i've got some bloody good podcasts in me after this but well yeah this <laughs> i just don't want to like note to bang sound, them yeah. all out into the public right now whilst we're right in the middle of it yeah yeah and that's yeah, like yeah. so i promise viewer the content we're probably struggling a bit with our content right now let's be honest we, we, we're chewing the cud and we maybe that's interesting but yeah we're not yeah we had some interesting podcasts of like how we got to zero to one million but we couldn't have done that in that journey we had to do it afterwards yeah but, um i've got some big big thoughts in me uh, that i'd like to share <laughs> okay <the> road. <laughs> i'm sure you do too <laughs> well that's yeah one for another another time okay yeah cool a month or two <laughs> yeah let's right. uh let's call it call it on this one all right till next time Hello, everyone bye ciao